Good morning. Welcome to Bethany. We're so glad you're here today. It is the 16th Sunday after the Pentecost, and we're working our way through, starting today, the next uh, several weeks, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. It's a book that is uh, called a book of uh, otherworldly peace and unearthly joy, and in it we find the root of being a place that is about gathering, connecting, and sending. And we're so glad you're with us here at Bethany today. I invite you to stand for our opening song. with the invocation. Goodwill and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are yours. I'm convinced that God who began this good work in you will carry it through to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Lord, 
May our love keep on growing, that we may be able to determine what is best and be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, fill our lives and everything that God has approved over Jesus, so that we may bring glory and grace to God. Dear Lord, you have called us to do nothing out of selfish ambition and to have the interest of others as forefronts in our thoughts and in humility to think of others and ourselves. Yet, we confess, Lord, that we are by nature selfish. So we think more about ourselves than we ought, and less of others than we should. Dear Lord Jesus, humble yourself, and let us humble ourselves before In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. For his sake, God forgives us all our sins and bestows on us his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who's begun his good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my Lord, I need you.
righteousness, O God, how I need. Morning. First scripture reading is from Genesis 50, verse 15 through 21. Joseph's brothers realized what their father's death could mean. So they thought, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us? What if he decides to pay us back for all the evil we did to him? They sent a messenger to Joseph to say, before your father died, he commanded us, this is what you should say to Joseph. I'm begging you to forgive the crime and the sin your brothers committed against you. What they did to you was very evil. So now please forgive our crime because we are servants of your father's God. Joseph cried when he got their message. Then his brothers also came and immediately bowed down in front of him. We are your slaves, they said. Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I can't take God's place. Even though you planned evil against me, God planned good to come out of it. This was to keep many people alive as he is doing now. Don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. In this way, he reassured them, setting their minds at ease. I'd like to invite our third graders who went to, through First Bible Camp with their parents to come forward. We had five. We had five um, of our third graders from our church and our school who went through First Bible Camp, and I think that a few of them are here with us today. I'm going to present their Bibles to them, and then uh, we are going to give a quick prayer blessing over their families and the Bibles. All right, Victoria, this is yours. Uh, Lana who could not make it right now. Donnie, here's yours. And, uh, I, and you will get yours in class. Uh, you will get yours in class this week. But let's go ahead and do a quick prayer now. Please fold your hands, bow your heads. And Lord, I give you thanks and praise for these third graders and their parents who went through First Bible Camp. They dug into your word together. They learned a bit more about your great book, the compilation of 66 books. We thank you that your word is living and active. We pray as these kids and parents continue to dig into your word that they would understand more of who you are, who you created them to be, and how much you love them and each and every one of us. In your great name we pray, amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, any of the children who wanna come up for the children's message. You guys who are just up here, you could come up too if you'd like, or not. I might need help getting up since I'm now sitting on the floor. <laughs> Hi. How are you? <clears throat> <I'm>, <laughs> you sound like me <laughs> getting down on the floor. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? That's a good one. Yeah. Okay, well, this is great. So, here's a question for you. For what are you thankful right now? Anything at all, what are you thankful for? What? Friends. What else? Jesus. 
Jesus. Anybody else? Oh, oh, you're just stretching your busted wrist. Oh, sorry. I forgot this is live stream too. Anybody else? Okay, that's okay. I'm thankful for family. That includes Dr. Fink. For work that keeps me busy. For a nice home. For food. Now, this might be a little harder to answer. For what are you thankful like last month or during the summer? Some memory that you have. It could even go further back. What are you thankful for in the past? Go. The summertime, that's in the past, kept you busy, very good. Anybody else think of something, a memory that you have that you are thankful for? Go ahead. Or are you just waving at pastor? That's okay, too. You're waving at pastor, good. You got something? Yeah, I went to Canada. Oh, to Canada, yeah, so you had a trip. That was in the past. Okay, here are some memories for me, and I can think of more than you guys because I am way, 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 way older. So I have a few more memories that I can remember right now. Growing up here in Lakewood, Long Beach, being a member of this church, and I even went to this school for my parents and for friends that I grew up with, long time ago, and some of them are here. I'm thankful for all of that. Those longer thankful things that we just talked about might be a little bit about what the Apostle Paul is going to talk about in a verse you're going to hear in just a minute. I'm going to say part of it. Paul says, I thank my God for all the memories I have of you every time I pray for you. You see, we're gathered together right now in this place at this time for a reason. Those memories of the things that we're thankful keep us going on this journey that God has set before us. And a big part of this journey is to tell others about what Jesus did for us. What did Jesus do? Go ahead. Died on the cross? Did he stay dead? What happened? He rose on the third day. And he defeated sin, death, and the devil. That's right for us. That's the journey that we're on. We have to keep remembering and thinking about those things. And the other important thing is, tell someone who may not know about Jesus so that they can gather sometime way, way, way down the road up in heaven with all of us. So be thankful for those memories. Continue to make new ones, ones that will last in Jesus forever. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your Son, our Savior. We thank you for memories that we have that we can be thankful for, for people in our lives teachers, friends, whoever. Bless these children here. Bless all of these children here and their families. Keep them in your care. Watch over them and protect them always. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Have a great week. Second scripture reading is from Philippians 1, 2 to 6. Goodwill and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are yours. I thank my God for all the memories I have of you. Every time I pray for all of you, I do it with joy. I can do this because of the partnership we've had with you in the good news from the first day you believed until now. I'm convinced that God, who began this good work in you, will carry it through to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. 
This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Gospel reading is from Matthew 23, 37 to 39. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stone to death those sent to you. How often I wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Your house will be abandoned, deserted. I can guarantee that you will not see me again until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is a reading from the gospel of the Lord. Be seated.
saint and for the sinner It's enough for this whole wide world Yes, your grace finds me Yes, your grace finds me You are here because God's grace in Christ has found you and generally when we come together, one of the things we probably try to find is a connection in the uh, Bible readings for the day. And at first glance or at first listen, you might think, I don't really know how that epistle and the gospel go together. I mean, the epistle is filled with heartwarming delight, heartwarming pride, from the apostle to the Gentiles. And the gospel is filled with gut-wrenching pain of the Holy One of Israel. The epistle has, has Paul's joy just dripping from it, while the gospel has Jesus' sorrow dripping from it. And you might wonder, how do these two readings go together? I think the answer is to gather. They're both about gathering. Jesus desires to gather, to gather the children of Jerusalem to himself. And St. Paul delights over those who have been gathered into the universal church and the local congregation at Philippi to whom he writes. Our texts today are all about desiring and delighting in and over the gathered. Our congregation, at least our mission statement, says that we are about desiring and delighting to gather as well. Bethany Lutheran Church exists to gather God's beloved children into community around his word and gifts, ever exploring, seeking, and discovering ways to equip and empower us to gather and to become gatherers. Now, when Matthew is writing the word that Jesus speaks, he uses a word that can be translated to assemble or be assembled, to unify or to be unified, to gather or to be gathered. The term contains both a passive and an active sense which is really kind of how we use the word gather in our everyday life, right? Gather can have an active or a passive sense. Uh, let's put it to the test here. Finish the sentence for me. A rolling stone. Almost all of you knew that. Gathers no moss, right? The, the very nature of the rolling prohibits the moss from growing. The active idea. Now, if you thought of the word in a different vein, you might be thinking over perhaps a plan that you concocted but never enacted, a product that you purchased but left on the shelf, and you might say it's just been lying around gathering dust, the passive inactive sense. It's just going to happen because you didn't do anything. That's how we use the term colloquially, biblically. Biblically, it also connects to reconciliation. That which was one time unified, that which was one time assembled through its own fault, through its own behavior, has become scattered and separated. And now through the act of another will be re assembled, reunited, gathered. In this sense of the term, gathering is always a unilateral act by one party. One half of the equation secures it. So in its narrowest sense, in its most refined definition, to gather is something that has first and foremost happened to you 
to me, to us, by the action of the gatherer, the one who said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. I think I could read that passage every morning and I would never fail to be struck by the sincere sorrow of our Savior. His deep, deep desire to gather, to bring to himself. Despite the pain and the heartache he has experienced at their hands, he throws his arms wide open and he begs them to fall therein so that they might be gathered to him. And make no mistake about it, Jerusalem, the term, doesn't only apply to those who lived in the city in 30 AD. He could have said Galilee, Galilee, Philippi, Philippi, Bethany, Bethany, A-N-E, or L-B, and he would have just been saying what he meant, everyone, all he desires to bring to himself. Now we said Jerusalem because that's where he was standing geographically. And he also intentionally waited to speak the word till he was there, I believe, because the, the very name of the city means city of peace. And yet the description we find of the residents are those who wage war upon the peace workers and the one who sent them. God desires to gather the children of Jerusalem to himself. The maternal instinct of God the Father is an incredible picture before us here today. Our God is a gathering God. Our God is a gathering God and his nature is to nurture and there is no one who is beyond his desiring. Whether it was in the words we sang earlier, wretched sinners or desperate frauds, or the words Jesus uses right here in the text. Look at that gospel reading again. Who is it that Jesus wants to gather to himself? Those who kill the prophets and stone those that are sent. Killers and stoners, take that however you want it, is who God would love to gather to himself. Though they are rebellious, obstinate, and vile, they are not beyond our God's desiring. And in the grace of Christ, he desires to find them. For his disposition is a favorable one, a gracious one on account of Jesus for you as well, for me too. For all of us who through our own fault have separated ourselves from him, would be lost forever if not found by his grace, he has gathered us. Not by our own reason or strength, but by his action. He has called gathered, enlightened, sanctified us. Even as he calls, gathers, and aligns the entire Christian church on earth and keeps it in union, assembled, gathered to Jesus Christ. Our God, the peacemaker, has unilaterally gathered us to himself done what only he can do and made us his in Christ. And our God who desires to gather and delights over the gathered, it's our purpose as a congregation. It's my prayer as a preacher here today. It's our hopes as we go throughout this series that we will desire to gather others to Christ and that no one will be beyond our desiring. Wretched sinners, desperate frauds, killers and stoners. And that we will delight over those who are here gathered, people who might be very different from us, 
not much like us, but are equal partners with us in the gospel. The gospel of desiring and delighting to gather in Christ, in whose name we pray if you will join me. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you would grant us deep anguish over those who will not, but that we would still open our arms to them nonetheless. And great joy over those who have been gathered to you. Make us a people of desire and delight over being gathered and to be gatherers in you, in whose name we pray. Amen. When I fear my faith will fail Christ will hold me fast When the tempter would prevail He will hold me fast I could never keep my hold Through life's fearful path For my love is often cold he must hold me fast He will hold me fast He will hold me fast For my Savior loves me so He will hold me fast gathering here in this place we acknowledge that God has given us all good gifts and so as a part of our worship we give him back a portion of those the things that he has given us through gifts and offerings let us take a moment to consecrate the gifts and offerings that have been given whether it be text to give in the box or dropped off at the church office your gifts 
are a soothing aroma, a sacrifice that God accepts and with which He is pleased. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You and praise You that You have given us all things. We pray that You would take these gifts and offerings and use them to further Your Word so that others may be gathered to the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection for them. Lead us and guide us, Lord Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand and confess with me the words of the Apostles' Creed as found in the bulletin on page 10. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the Spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the meaning of the saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have gathered us together here in this place to hear your word and receive your sacrament. Lord, may these things strengthen us so that we may go from this place and proclaim your name and your glory as we seek to gather others to your throne as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather together, we celebrate with those who celebrate. Lord, we thank you for another year of life that you've given Newton Sunday. We pray that you would continue to bless her and guide her. We thank you for the third graders who received their first Bible today and will receive their Bibles this week. Lord, lead them and bless them. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that Larry Crawford was inducted in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame this weekend. And we pray, Lord, that you would allow him to travel safely, he and his family to travel safely back to this place. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who are sick, struggling, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. We pray especially this day that you be with Kirby and Edward, Grace and Walter, Michelle and Mary, Roger and Heidi, Levi and Suzanne, Phyllis and Tom, Christina and Ron. And Lord God, we also bring before you those we mention in our hearts and minds at this time. Lord, restore them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as we go from this place, may we be people who are sent to the places where we live, learn, labor, and laugh to proclaim your good news. Lead us and guide us as a congregation to be a light in the midst of a dark world. Father, we pray for our school and for all those who attend it. We pray that you would bless our teachers and students each and every day. Be with our administrators, and may, they, may you guide them with wisdom and understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, these and all other prayers that we pray, we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. may be seated. As we sung earlier, God's grace finds us, and we know that God's grace finds us in his true body and blood, in with and under the bread and the wine. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread and we given thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup and we given thanks. He said, drink this, all of you. This is the covenant, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
I invite you to share that peace with one another. Restored and renewed, I'm buried with you and with you raised. From our tombs, fill us with your presence and make us one. Make us one as you are.
Now may this Christ, true body and blood, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith. From this day forward to life everlasting, go in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we have feasted upon the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that it would strengthen us in faith, assure us of the forgiveness of sins, and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life. May we go from this place strengthened and encouraged to seek to gather others to you through the proclamation of the gospel. We ask this all in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. A couple of announcements this morning. If you would uh, check in the back on page 18, the weekly chimes. There's a lot of stuff coming up, folks. So I uh, want to check that all out. I want to draw your attention to three specific announcements on the bottom of page 20. Uh, as we have been gathered, so we are sent. And uh, we are sent with an opportunity to serve our city here in Long Beach. Uh, if you would sign up for the Citywide Serve Day, the information can be found by registering. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can ask me. Also, the next page over, 21 at the top, Hip, hip, hooray, our friendship group is beginning again this Wednesday, September 20th. We invite all those who are able to uh, join us in the parish lounge. Uh, and then finally, uh, our SSP Arts and Crafts Boutique on September 30th. My mom sent 78 items to sell. So there's lots of things to buy outside of crafters, but also buy my mom's stuff because 100% of those proceeds go to SSP. But uh, also, some things coming up in October. There's a little thing called October Fest that's coming up on the back of your bulletin. I invite you to register for that. With that, receive the blessing. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, think about these things, and the peace of God will be with you. Amen. For all the saints. Who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed.
ocean, the spottest coast, through gates of pearl streams, in the countless holes, singing to Serve the Lord.